Hello, I am Dr. David Cavan. I'm an endocrinologist at the University Hospitals Dorset, and I have over 25 years experience working with people with type 1 diabetes. For many years, people with type 1 diabetes have been advised to have a high carbohydrate diet, and they have been told that they can eat whatever they like as long as they inject the correct amount of insulin for their meals. Now, while this might be true in theory, it requires that the injected insulin gets into the blood at exactly the right time and at the right rate and in the right amount to deal with the glucose that's coming from the guts. In practice, that very often just does not happen. And the result is that blood glucose level could go too high or too low or very often both as a result. And so for many years now, I have explained to my patients that if this is a problem that they experience, then one option is actively to reduce the carbohydrate in their meals as a means of improving their blood glucose control. In many, this leads to less hypoglycemia, less variation in glucose levels, significantly less insulin requirement, and very often they also lose weight. But don't just take my word for it. Listen to the experiences of the following people with type 1 diabetes who have done just that. Hi, my name's Jim Evans and I've been a type 1 diabetic for nearly 20 years now. And despite living a healthy lifestyle for that time, I've never felt better than on a low carb uh, diet. Uh, and that's reflected across various uh, figures. I've been eating low carb now for six weeks. Uh, my HbA1c has come down from 60 millimoles to 52 millimoles already in that time. Uh, I've lost uh, 10 kilograms reasonably in weight to just above 80 kilograms. And importantly, without the feeling of hunger. Uh, remarkably, my basal insulin has dropped from 46 units across two injections uh, to just six units in the morning and no more than about five units of total bolus across the day. Uh, my body feels less sore and I need less recovery time, say after a run. I feel fantastic on this way of eating and I just want to carry it on having seen those results. Uh, I was lucky enough to find some good support and I'd like to see others getting similar support as well. Um, you know, I have days now where I am 100% in a normal blood glucose range. Uh, and to be honest, I've never known that before. Long may it last. Hello, my name is Emma Porter. 16 years ago, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes with a blood sugar of 56 millimoles and I was 17 years old. At the time, I was seen by a dietitian and I also did a carb counting course. I was told that in order to achieve good blood glucose control, that I should be eating a higher carbohydrate diet, which was low in fat. I was told that because I had insulin, I could eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, which is what I did for about eight years. I never had an HbA1c below eight. I never saw blood sugars really in the, in the fours or the fives. A hypo for me felt like an eight. I never had energy. I never had much mental clarity. I was always tired. I was really, really overweight and I didn't have periods. I felt like I had no control of my diabetes and yet I questioned why because I was following the advice. I was carb counting and yet I was still seeing these crazily high numbers. I just thought that was what, what, it, what it was and what I should be living with. Then in 2013, I suddenly stumbled across the lower carb lifestyle. And when I say lower carb, I want to say lower carb because people get confused and believe that the low carb lifestyle is no carbs. I still eat carbohydrates. I just eat them in the form of vegetables and things. even things like eggs have a tiny bit of carbohydrates in them. So I now eat a really, really delicious and varied diet. I really love the food that I eat and my HbA1c is always in the fours. I have periods, which is something I never had before, and I was able to conceive two little girls naturally, which was something I was told would never happen. 
I now eat a delicious, nutritious, varied diet and I have so much more energy, even with the sleep deprivation of having children. Um, I really wish that the advice was given um, to people when they were newly diagnosed with type 1 diabetes to try a lower carb lifestyle or at least give people the choice because if I'd had the choice back then I probably would have tried it and seen for myself the benefits without waiting all these years. The problem for me was that by the time I'd found the lower carb lifestyle I had background retinopathy and that was terrifying the idea of potentially losing my sight. But now, eight years on, I have finally um, got the all clear of any background retinopathy. And I'm certain that that is because for years and years and years now, I've achieved a really tight time and range target with my blood sugars. So thank you. Bye. My name's John Furness. I've had type 1 diabetes for nearly nine years. I wish so much that I'd been given the patient choice of opting for a low carbohydrate dietary approach to managing my type 1 diabetes rather than having to find that out myself. Um, after I'd been diagnosed I did reduce my carbs and my insulin, insulin use started off quite low. I'll show you my data here. Um, this is diagnosis and you can see insulin rising and what was going on here was my carbohydrate was creeping up and my average blood sugar was also creeping up. I could see the writing on the wall which was heading for double diabetes, type 1 plus type 2, which I really didn't want, and all the complications that come along with, 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 with diabetes. Um, Dr. Bernstein has the law of small numbers, and that is lower carbohydrates require lower insulin, requires lower corrections and less overshooting and undershooting. For me, type 1 diabetes has always been a very stressful condition to manage and if you can reduce that stress by making your journey easier, that's a hell of a benefit. Um, you can see that the variation in um, blood glucose uh, reduced dramatically as well as the average reduced dramatically when I introduced a ketogenic dietary approach that's less than 50 grams a day. Um, so both of those things have a massive benefit to my diabetes management. The other things that changed for me, um, I lost a lot of weight, 15 kilos. Um, my eczema disappeared overnight. Less need to brush my teeth and clean my skin. Um, I don't get any food cravings anymore. I haven't had a cough, cold or a sneeze in, in two years. Um, and I basically developed a new target in life and that's to drop dead at 90, fit as a fiddle and sharp as a razor free from all the diabetic complications and from vascular diseases and etc. Thank you. Hi, my name's Ian Lake. Uh, I've had type 1 diabetes for uh, 26 years. For the first 20 years, I managed it with a usual care, that is high volumes of carbohydrates with each meal, chasing that with insulin, which didn't serve me very well at all. So I adopted a keto lifestyle six years ago, which transformed my life. I met somebody uh, a couple of weeks ago who had had type 1 diabetes for eight years. They were highly educated and said that they had a uh, top diabetes management team. So they were quite concerned when two months ago they accidentally bumped into keto on the internet, adopted the lifestyle, and it transformed their life too. Uh, the obvious question was, well, why wasn't I given this information earlier? Well. I couldn't answer that either. Um, I think it is incumbent upon all of us healthcare professionals working in diabetes to provide information that is measured to patients uh, so that they can make their own minds up and we can support them safely through it. A ketogenic lifestyle reduces the volumes of insulin required, increases day-to-day -day insulin safety, reduces hypos by up to a factor of five and enables a reduction in HbA1c to near normal levels. In fact, 90% of patients achieve an HbA1c of 48 millimoles per mole on ketogenic lifestyle care, compared with just fewer than 10% on standard usual care. This difference is so great that it is, it is surprising that no one in the diabetes field with influence has picked this up. 
and I hope that in the very short term the situation will change and we'll be able to give our people with type 1 opportunities to transform their lives in the way that has um, been the case for myself. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr David Unwin, a GP from just north of Liverpool and I want to tell you about low carb and type 1 diabetes. We've been offering this as a choice for the last few years and I've been amazed how uh, few problems we've had. I think the thing is people with type 1 diabetes really understand blood sugar control and diet and in fact they're used to upping and downing their insulin uh, dosage over the years. The advantages uh, that I've noticed are far fewer hypos and hypos are less serious. Uh, from a practice point of view, on average, uh, these people are using 50 to 70% less insulin every day. So we're making uh, significant savings. But really, the greatest advantage is how these people feel about their type 1 diabetes. They're so much less frightened. They're very, very grateful. It's so worth helping our patients with type 1 have a go with low carb. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah Chapman and my son Oliver was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes 15 years ago at the age of 4. When Oliver was diagnosed, the dietary advice we received was biased towards the use of a moderate to high carbohydrate, low fat diet. He could eat whatever he wanted as long as he bolused the corresponding insulin. In the early years, Oliver's control was excellent with an HbA1c of around 6%. However, as a very active and very tall 17 year old at six foot five, his carbohydrate and insulin demand was huge. Control became very challenging and he started to suffer with physical symptoms such as weight gain, background retinopathy, gastroparesis and painful joints. At no stage was it suggested that we could resolve these issues by reducing the carbohydrate. And in fact, when it became clear that he was insulin resistant, he was actually offered metformin. We started to research how we could help him when we came across the low carb and high healthy fat approach. I immediately adapted everything we were eating to low carbohydrate and the results were almost immediate in terms of his vastly improved blood sugar and timing range of 90% compared to 20% previously. His physical symptoms completely resolved within a matter of weeks. Our experience and all of the supporting data demonstrate the huge benefits that can be gained as a type 1 diabetic following a low carbohydrate diet. It is my view that anyone being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes should be advised as to the considerable, benef considerable benefits and those that choose to follow this method should be actively encouraged and supported by their diabetes teams. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I have a 10 year old daughter with type 1 diabetes. She was diagnosed two and a half years ago and we initially followed the standard medical advice to eat what you want and dose for it, which inevitably led to blood sugars that resembled a roller coaster, anxiety around mealtimes and frequent miscalculation of insulin doses. I started to do my own research online and came across a book chapter called The Law of Small Numbers, which was from Dr. Bernstein's The Diabetes Solution. It made so much sense to me that I ordered the book immediately and joined a Facebook group for parents of recently diagnosed children that was set up by people who followed this approach and wanted to share it with others. We took quite some time to fully adopt the low-carb way of eating, starting with breakfast and then snacks. I then negotiated a month's trial with my daughter of fully low-carb eating after that, and we haven't looked back, transitioning the whole family to this way of eating. During this time, we've had no support from our hospital team for this way of managing her diabetes, although we have had recognition from them that she was indeed receiving enough nutrition and that she is growing appropriately. I have asked for a slower insulin to deal with the protein rise, explaining why we need it, but they've refused me point blank. The improvements that we have seen from following a low-carb way of eating have been slower hypos that usually only require half a glucose tab to treat, sometimes a whole tab, smaller insulin doses and therefore smaller errors in dosing decisions, far less anxiety about meal times, and the ticking insulin time bomb that is inevitable when you try to pre-bolus appropriately for a fast-carb, high-carb meal, we now only ever have to pre-bolus for breakfast. 
The thing I haven't mentioned yet is the elephant in the room when it comes to paediatric diabetes consultations. No one ever talks about the long-term complications that come with running higher than normal blood sugars. And it's my firm belief that diabetes management should be aimed at maintaining blood sugars as close to normal as possible and that parents should be given the option to choose a low-carb way of eating and educated about proper insulin dosing for it, including the use of slower insulins at the point of diagnosis. My daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes five years ago at the age of 10. At the time, we were advised to keep eating a healthy, balanced diet. Things changed when my daughter started using a CGM. I remember her eating a tiny piece of birthday cake and watching the CGM arrow shoot up. And that was when I began thinking that the advice I had been given just did not make sense. When my daughter was diagnosed, I was given a sheet detailing target HbA1c. This said, to stay fit and healthy for as long as possible, the target you are aiming for is 53 to 58 millimoles. I felt uncomfortable with the for long as possible part of that sentence and a quick Google told me that the average HbA1c for a girl of my daughter's age was 30 to 31 millimoles. I was horrified. Why was it okay for my child to have an HbA1c that was not normal? And my next question was, could it be normal? And more research gave me a resounding yes when I discovered that others were maintaining excellent HbA1c's with a low carb approach. We changed and we have never looked back. Since her diagnosis, my daughter's HbA1c has never been above 48 millimoles. For the past three years, it has been below 42 millimoles and over the past year, it has been 37 millimoles. The dietary changes have been easy to incorporate and my daughter has grown she is five foot six and a healthy weight. Perhaps most importantly, she's been able to live her life without diabetes taking centre stage. Her blood sugars are steady and she's able to get on with her day without constantly dealing with highs and crashing lows. Low carb eating with a couple of low GI additions works for us. And I really hope that soon everyone will be told about this option at diagnosis.